Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on energy modeling fundamentals with Honeybee. And in the previous video, I mentioned that the constructions of our walls, roofs, floors, and windows in our energy model are being dictated by this object called the construction set. So in this video, we're going to delve into what exactly a, a construction set is made of and what the assumptions are currently in our model when we've chosen this default generic construction set to assign to our room. So to start off first, I want to visualize some of the construction attributes that are assigned to this model. And so if we go back over to the Honeybee tab, and I'm going to make this a little bit larger for the time being, you'll see right next to this HP color room attributes that we're currently using to preview the attributes assigned to our rooms in the, in the Rhino scene, right next to it there's a component called HP color face attributes. And this will allow us to study on a much deeper level what the properties are assigned to the individual walls, roofs, floors, and other geometry elements of our, of our model, rather than just looking at these, these properties that are assigned on a much higher level on just the room. So first thing is first, I'm, I've dropped this component on my canvas, and I'm going to turn the preview off on our color room attributes such that we don't have end up with multiple things previewing on top of each other. If I right click on this component and select preview, that'll ensure that it turns off in the, in the Rhino scene. And maybe just to make our canvas a little more organized, I'm going to select these and then hit Control G to group them so I can easily move them out of the way. And actually, I don't think we need this HB room attributes component anymore. So I'm just going to keep it like this, make a little space for our visualization of face attributes. So you'll notice this, this component for face attributes looks, works a lot like the HB color room attributes in that it takes a honeybee object as input. Uh, so these could be rooms or a model or, or they could be individual faces or apertures if you wanted to check their properties. But I'm just going to take my model just like I did with the HB color room attributes component. And now we want to plug in a specific attribute to preview within the Rhino scene. And you'll notice under the visualize tab, there actually is a Honeybee core face attributes component that gives you a drop down list of some of these very basic properties assigned to the faces and, and apertures of your model. So for example, if I connect up the display name, you'll see we get a color coded energy model with uh, a color for each and every different name for each of these different faces within our model. Probably visualization like this isn't quite as useful, but let's say if I were to do something like the boundary condition here, this is very useful for helping understand uh, and check. This is another way we could have checked whether something is a ground versus outdoors versus doesn't have a boundary condition, which you can see describes all of our shades in our model. Or if I had checked something like the, uh, let's see, the area we could check easily, that maybe is a little more useful. You can check the, the surface area or perimeters or face type, right? Wall, roof, floor, we can check that easily. Um, and, uh, and a few other sort of core attributes that aren't necessarily specific to energy modeling can be checked this way. But as you can bet, the, we're very much so interested in knowing what the, those attributes are, what those constructions that must be assigned to these faces in order to be able to simulate them in Energy Plus. That's what we would really like to know next. So many of you could have already guessed where we would find these energy attributes, these face energy attributes. It's right under the HP Energy tab. And it's right next to these room energy attributes that we were just visualizing in our previous videos. You'll find this HP face energy attributes immediately adjacent to it. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto the canvas. And you'll see that there are a few different uh, energy properties that we can preview in the Rhino scene. Many of these are, are pretty useful things you'd want to check frequently. But let's just start off with the construction. So if I go and plug that in as my attribute, you'll see that all the constructions, the construction of the roof is a generic context construction. We have the windows are a generic double pane window. We have a generic exterior wall, a lot, a lot of generic stuff in this generic construction set. Uh, but right, but basically maybe the main takeaway is that all of these constructions are probably not really specific to a given building type or to a specific climate. And we could validate that assumption for ourselves by checking some of these other attributes. Let's say the R value. Uh, and you can see these are all in metric. So for my American friends who know IP, R value is much better than they know metric ones. The easy way you can convert is just by multiplying by 5.678 or, or roughly by five. So you can see the maximum R value of the, which looks like it's probably the roof has the highest R value. 
If I were to go inside there, yeah, that's red. Uh, and you'd see that has an R value of 2.43 in metric, or or that would be about 10 or 11 or so, I think, within uh, within IP. So what else do we have here? We can check the U value of the windows, or probably more specifically, we might want to know the U factor, which is going to account for things like the air film resistance. And so we can see our windows have a U factor of 1.69 in metric, uh, which is pretty standard double pane with a low E coating. We can check things like the SHGC, the solar heat gain coefficient, and oh, this is the biggest red flag I've seen so far. So I know my mother-in-law's house is in Southern California, and it is very sunny over there, and the building code, I know for a fact, would not let you do a solar heat gain coefficient this high. Uh, these days, it has to be down below around 0.2, I think, or somewhere between 0.2 and 0.25. Um, is usually where a lot of the solar heat gain coefficients are. So this is definitely not a solar heat gain coefficient that was made for the climate of Southern California. Maybe the R values could be could be acceptable for this case, but I can tell right off the bat that this is this is a set of constructions that are not uh, made for this climate here. Let's see what else can we see. We can see the solar transmittance. So whereas the solar heat gain coefficient includes both the transmitted solar energy, as well as the energy from the sun that gets absorbed by the glass and then conducts to the interior. This is looking at just that solar transmitted portion, so just that energy that is directly transmitted. Uh, and you can see we also have things like visible transmittance, uh, which is understandably a lot higher than the solar transmittance when you have a low E coating. So we can certainly tell that this generic double pane glass has a, has a low E coating on it. Uh, and we can see some other useful things, like, for example, the solar reflectance of, on the outside surfaces. Or we can see things like the the thickness of the materials, or, uh, or I guess that being the thickness of all the materials together that make up the construction. You can even see the individual material layers that make up each of these constructions, although this is a pretty long list here. Uh, but right, you can see the makeup of the roof. It has a roof membrane, what the insulation is. It's got some concrete. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, generic low-E glass making up the window, right? So you can start to understand a lot of these assumptions assigned to these individual faces this way. Uh, but all right, so we know right off the bat that this, this generic construction set that we, we realized was assigned to our energy model is not going to work. It's not a good assumption for this, my, my mother-in-law's house that is in Southern California, because we know there should definitely be a lower solar heat gain coefficient. So let's see, I'm going to change this back to construction right now. And in the next video, we're going to look at actually changing the construction set, which just like the program type was something that was created all the way back when we first made our rooms from solid. So we're going to look into changing that construction set so that hopefully we can make sure that our, our constructions of our model are a good representation of what we would actually build, of, of what my mother-in-law's house is actually made of. Uh, in the climate of Southern California. So with that, thank you for sticking it out through this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.